How could it have come to this? It was just an award show. A goddamn awards show. I don't even know why I'm still here. Talking to myself. What a joke. What a fraud. Maybe a farce is a better way to describe this mess. I don't know. Been out here for so long now. Not entirely sure if you're even receiving this still. I guess, at the least, I could tell you how I got here. Maybe you can make sense of it all. I hope you have the time. It seems out here, all I have now is time. Time, time, keeps it ticking keeps ticking into infinity. Into infinity. Let me start from the top, where this, in quote, space voyage began. Way before I realized I was going to be floating around in N9 for a while. For you, for you, it was February 1st, Lunar New Year, blast off. Year's award show in Miami. I asked myself, how could we top this show? Where is somewhere we can go that is bigger than Miami? I realized quickly, well, driving past the Kennedy Space Center helped too. I realized that in order to make the show bigger, we had to go outside our parameters. We had to go, we had to go off world, off earth. So using all our profit from Red Apron sponsorships and part of my pension from my former job at Ikea, I bought a one-man ticket to space. It was a hefty price, but I felt it would be worth it. <laughs> think about it, think about it. The first ever Wars and Awards broadcasted from space. This was going to be historical. Yes, it was historic. Everything was going good at the start. Hello everybody, and welcome to the 5th ever Wars and Awards, live on twitch.tv slash personafun. And guess what? We're in frickin' space! It's awesome! Uh, whew. A lot of breath in this helmet. I mean, we have oxygen on the ship, so uh, I should just do this for the rest of the, the show. Uh, but yeah, uh, we upped the production this year, and we're broadcasting live from this little spaceship to you, to your mobile device or your computer, uh, through the space waves or airwaves or something. I don't know how it works, but uh, it's getting to you, and that's, that's good. Um, so yeah, first announcement, I want to say that there is a Warzone.com full gear membership giveaway happening in the post show, but you can enter for it right now. All you have to do is type spaceship in chat, and Moobot will take your entry. And you can do this uh, anytime during the show, uh, or if you leave and come back, just type it again just to be safe. Alright, let's go into the order of events. Alright, now we're here at the fancy order of events screen. To start, I'll say the order of events is in a different order this year, and this time we have four nominees for each award. The first five awards go from a map award to a gameplay related award. As you can see, we have best small map, then best match, best medium map, best tournament, 
and best large map. Then, we got three big hitters in best ladder performance, best clan league performance, and one of the new awards from last year's show, Most Improved Warzoner. After Most Improved Warzoner, we have Toronto-based artist Karolanka returning to the show to knock her sandals off again like they did in Miami. And after that, we find out which clan wins best clan for 2021, followed by one of my personal favorite awards, best new map maker. Then we continue on the map hype train with best strategic map and best creative map, and then map of the year. And to finish it all off, we'll have our last three awards, map maker of the year, Warzone of the year, and the biggest award of all, community member of the year. And like the last couple years, and I mentioned this briefly earlier, but we'll be having a post show after the show is over, and we'll play on the map of the year and kind of do a Q&A kind of thing, and of course, do the full year membership giveaway. 16 awards, 64 nominees, and 16 winners. Are you all ready? Let's go sit in the main deck where we'll use N9's recapping software to go over our nominees. I'll meet you there. set up for our first award best small map got my comfy uh, pilot seat here that happens to look like uh, my computer chair that I use while I'm streaming it's a coincidence completely different chair all right so the four map nominees up for best small map are maps that utilize less than a hundred territories in an interesting way let's see our nominees first map is St. Kitts and Nevis by all usernames are taken, 12. Made in late November, this map checks off another real world location made into a map on warzone.com. This map has just below 69 territories and 14 bonuses, which makes this map a perfect island getaway to have a 1v1 or a quick 2v2 match. If you ask me, I'd book your trip as soon as possible. Our second nominee is another map with St. in its name. It's called St. Vincent and the Grenadines. It was made by former co-host of this award show and my friend, Absolutely Ethan. Like usernames, this map also checks off a real-world location map. The 78 territory map creates for some interesting gameplay, particularly at St. Vincent, as it has the most territories, so lots of fighting can happen there. We have to keep an eye out on the Grenadine Islands, as an enemy can be creeping in with decent armies per turn. If you're a capital G gamer, then you'll love this next map. It's called the Skeld, and it's made by veteran map maker Coleon. Made right before Warzone Awards 4 was aired, this map looks like a replica of the famous Among Us map. Coleon does a fantastic job of making this feel just like the Among Us map, uh, for example, like having the vents be portals. The biggest question this map faces is, will the gamers rise up and vote for this map for best small map? So we have two real world based maps, one based off a video game, and now we have one based off something I had to pay for in college, a washing machine. Battle for the washing machine was the creation of Aranus during one of his fundraising streams. This nominee has the least amount of territory sitting at only 38. However, this map includes some fun territory names and is committed to being a casual map compared to some of Aranus' other maps he's made in the past. To be honest, that was N9's first time using the nominee recapping software, so I think N9 did a pretty good job. Nice job, N9. Thank you, Devin. You're welcome, N9. Now, let's see who the first winner of the show is. The winner of Best Small Map. 
The winner of best small map is The Skeld by Colion. Congrats to the Skeld by Colion and the rest of our nominees in Best Small Map. Make sure to give them some love in chat if you haven't already. Alright, the next award on our docket is Best Match. The definition of this award is as follows. A significant match that showcased fun or strategic competition. It's a pretty straightforward definition. You get it. Alright, let's see our nominees. Real-time tournament Landria 1v1 semifinals. This match is between two fifth column confederation players, Ralph, and one of last year's Warzone of the Year nominees, Ursus. This match went 16 turns, with Ralph starting with 8 armies per turn compared to Ursus's 5. The most interesting turn was around turn 10, when Ralph sent two armies at each surrounding territory around Aedgerup, then blockaded Kana. Those are territory names, by the way. This wound up being a mistake, and Ursus took advantage and never looked back. This match is a great example of Ursus' ability to play from behind. Multi-Template Ladder Rufus vs. Samwise is another 1v1 match nominee. Veteran competitive player Rufus from Master Clan takes on Samwise of Lufred. This match also goes on for 16 turns, and like our first match nominee, showcases a veteran player making a comeback from an early deficit. For majority of the turns, Rufus only had 5 armies per turn to Samwise's 7. However, Rufus played perfectly against Samwise, who was forced to surrender once Rufus got to 9 armies per turn on turn 13. Our third nominee is from the famous Warzone.com drama epicenter, Clan League. This match is from Division A and a 2v2 on Final Earth between FCC and 1. What I like about this match, and for folks who've watched my Warhol streams, you know all about the Australia bonus strat I use. You either attack Australia, or attack from it. Rack Leader made me very proud with a hard fight in Cali, then continued their push through the Solomon Islands and by turn 13, their teammate Hergel captured Australia. Without that push, this game might have gone a different direction. This is definitive proof that the Australia strat is the best strat. The last match up for best match is one that is kind of the opposite of the others. This one was a casual game. Well, maybe casual isn't the correct word, uh, as it had 40 players uh, playing on last year's map of the year, Middle Earth in the Third Age. This was uh, in celebration of last year's Wars and Awards, so it was a bit more chaotic. This game was played at the start of the post show and went on for like three hours before Emmy Cat won, capturing almost the entire map. Those are our four best match nominees. We have one from the multi template ladder one from a real-time tournament, one from Clan League, and one from last year's awards. Now, let's read off the winner. The best match of 2021 is... Wars and Awards 4! That's, uh, I made that one. <laughs> I actually won an award. There you go. Alright, uh, congrats to me for winning best match. Um, never never would have guessed that. But uh, moving on, uh, I mentioned earlier that our first six awards bounced back and forth between map awards and gameplay oriented awards. We did best small map to start, and we just finished best match. Now we're jumping back into maps with best medium map. Best medium map's definition is similar to best small map. The only difference is the number of territories. These nominees have territory counts between 100 and 300 territories. Personally, this is one of my favorite awards, as I prefer medium maps out of all the types of maps, because I can do team games on most of them, and they take a good amount of time when, you know, around 45 minutes, but they don't take four hours, you know? It's good for uh, Warhol streams. But uh, let me know what map size uh, you prefer in the chat. I'm interested in what you think. While you're doing that, though, I'm going to run through the nominees for best medium map. Let's do that.
Genny Minas as a new map maker last year took home best small map. In this year's award show, they look to win best media map with India 2021. As stated in the map description, this is a quote, medium sized updated map of India with her states in subdivisions, end quote. This late February creation has 215 territories with 62 bonuses, which makes it a solid map to play free for all and larger team games on. And of course, this map is well crafted and consistent in design like all of Ganymedes' maps. A veteran map maker, I believe a three time winner of Map Maker of the Year. Uh, I've lost count. You know who I'm talking about. It's Lionheart, and his map Trunia is a strong favorite for this award. Trunia was published three days before our previous nominee, India 2021, and immediately became a Lionheart classic. What makes this map unique is how Lionheart effectively makes it feel like the entire map is playable. Using the ships and adding tiny borders in the water, it makes it feel you captured more than just a boat to cross to the other side. It's a little bit of a neat detail that makes this map stand out. Pronunciation Freak with his map Paraguay was historic. It officially helped complete the first continent on Warzone.com. Every country in South America now had its own unique map. Also, speaking of historic, Pronunciation based his map off of Paraguay from 1813 to the present day, and used that to help create his bonuses and territories. This map, out of all our Media Map Award nominees, sits at the highest number of territories at 238. But, like India 2021, it has 62 bonuses. Maybe 62 bonuses is the magic number for a media map. One of our nominees for Best New Map Maker is GMG, who could get an early trophy here with their map titled Dominican Republic. The classic American wedding destination in all its municipalities was created into this 159 territory map in late September and became GMG's first 4.0 or higher rated map. Probably my favorite part of this map is that it sticks with the peachy and tan color palette and goes against the grain when it comes to the sea surrounding the map. Instead of blue, they kept that tan color. Not many map makers, I think, try to change it up and go for an artistic choice rather than a realistic direction. There you have it, nerds, your four nominees for Best Media Map. You had three real-world based maps and one fantasy-esque map. Now, let's see who won. The winner of Best Media Map... N9! N9, what's going on? Asteroid belt ahead. Danger. Potential to go off course. Wait, what? An asteroid belt? There's not supposed to be one on our... <laughs> what the hell is going on? We have entered the asteroid belt known as the Blizzard Belt. I never, I've never heard of that asteroid belt before. What? Wait. It was previously known as the Vivendi Belt. Wait. Like acting... Well, whatever this asteroid belt is, just just get us out of here, N9. Go a different route. Avoid these rocks. Roger. Changing course. Crisis averted. <sighs> Alright. Glad we're out of there. Uh, sorry about that, everyone. Uh, phew. Wait, where, where were we? Oh, that's right. Reading uh, the winner of Best Medium Map. <sighs> okay. Winner of Best Medium Map is... Trudia by Lionheart. Congrats. Congrats to Lionheart for winning Best Media Map with his map Trudia. All right, so that was uh, three awards now. Uh, still got. 13 more to go. Not gonna lie, I'm feeling already a little tired. Uh, I think it's the the jet lag, or is it space lag? Spaceship lag? Does space even have a time zone? I don't know. Just traveling to space is really tiring, but whatever, you don't care about that. Let's move on to our next award, best tournament. So uh, best tournament nominees are significant tournaments that showcase fun and or strategic competition. Here are the best tournaments for 2021. First up is WGL 194 Ambassalia. 
This real-time tournament, hosted by Min34 on his Twitch channel, as part of Wargaming Live, had 21 players including some popular competitive Warzone players like Master Ryro, Platinum, and Ursus. Not sure why none of them won. Maybe it was because the Basalia template they used? I don't know. But Juan from Clan 1 placed first in the tournament going undefeated. They actually eliminated Ursus in the first round, then Master Ryro in the quarterfinals. Overall, this tournament captures the always popular Wargaming Live. This next one is called All Usernames Are Taken 12's Small Earth 1v1. Could you guess who hosted it? And can you guess which map it was played on? Answers are All Usernames Are Taken 12 and All Usernames Are Taken 12's Small Earth Map. But now here's the final question for all the marbles. How many players played in this tournament? Well, I don't know the answer because I lost count after like 15, but I think it's at least 10 because usernames himself wind up winning the whole thing by going 10 and 0. Some might say rigged to that, but I say the creator knows his creation best. Now this next one was made by one of my longtime Warhold chatters, Ryan Doherty. On the same day of last year's awards and using the map Haunted Mansion, Ryan created the unofficial, official Warzone Award tournament. I actually played in this tournament and won some games. We, Team D, went 5-2, and two. but I think my teammate Wolven gets more of the credit as you know I'm uh, bad at this game. Team CU wind up winning it all, and they were made up of Asics, Lobsy, and Nightfly. I will say this was a very fun tournament, and I'm hoping this becomes a tradition. Our last nominee for best tournament is one of the many classics from this OG clan. This is Poon Squad's French Tickler Classic 2021. Every year for the last several years at this point, the clan Poon Squad makes 5-7 to seven tournaments where they play on random maps throughout the year. The map they use for this one is called Blitzkrieg, which was made by Aranus. These tournaments that Poon Squad makes are just always super casual. I've always appreciated their consistency of bringing some fun games to the Warzone community. That is that. You just saw our four nominees for best tournament. And I have the winner right here. The winner of best tournament is... Warlight Gaming Live! Awesome. Congrats again. All right. Up next is another map award, and this one is also based on size. Can you guess what it is? Yes, yes, you're right. Best large map. Best large map nominees are maps that utilize more than 300 territories in an interesting way. This award can also be a hint at map of the year, as two of the nominees are up for that award. All right, N9, you know the drill. Let's show the nominees. Europa Universalis 4 by NL Gold Tank. This video game base map holds over 2,060 territories and 934 bonuses, and is also up for map of the year. Gold Tank started making this map in June of 2020, and unfortunately couldn't make the map bigger due to the file size. Interesting fact about this map too is that despite the number of territories, it's only the 22nd largest map on Warzone. Regardless, this map is perfect for diplomacy games, or if you want to play a free-for-all game that burns 10 hours. And I mean that in a nice way, by the way, because I only play Wars and Idol to burn time. El Dug's Tippecanoe 2, a map based off their hometown in Indiana, is our second nominee for Best Large Map. And like our last nominee, is up for another award later on in the show. El Dug states they were inspired by maps like Middle Earth in the Third Age and Netherlands HD, which they played when they first started getting into Warzone. On this map, you have a lot of cool bonus systems based off land use, roadways, waterways, and jurisdiction. Also, I'd like to point out the cool historic timeline on the right, going all the way back to 10,000 BC. We'll have to see if this map can win either this award or best creative map, or who knows, maybe both. Our third nominee for best large map is another Euro-styled map. This one is called Europe Physical Map, and it was made by Mulligan. Posted on February 17th in the year of our Lord, 2021, this 818 territory map has been updated throughout the year, adding historic tags and ship icons. One of my favorite details with this map is the drawings for the major cities, like Berlin, Budapest, Paris, and London. 
it adds to the character of this map that aims at being almost a historic guide of Europe throughout the centuries. Overall, this is just a well-crafted map, and that is one of the reasons this map is also up for Map of the Year. While we're kind of on the Europe conversation, let's take a look at our fourth nominee, which is based off the famous Italian city, Venice. Made by GMG this past May, they focused on what can be seen as almost a building-to-building, canal-to-canal warfare. I can imagine some intense battling happening in a free-for-all or a big team game on this map as you try to decide whether to expand, defend, or go on the offensive, as there's a lot of territories surrounded by four or more territories. Not many linear options on this map due to this, but I think that's what makes this map fun. We got four deserving nominees up for best large map. Unfortunately, only one can be the winner. The winner of best large map is... Europe Physical Map by Mulligan. Congratulations. Okay, that's our last map award for a little while, as our next four awards are the following. Best Ladder Performance, Best Clan League Performance, Most Improved War Zoner, and Best Clan. And right before Best Clan, we'll be having our halftime show with Karolanka. Really looking forward to that. <sighs> Sorry, I'm just, just a little tired. Let me, uh, let me get some caffeine. Not much left. Sorry about that. Ugh. Where were we? Um, Best Ladder Performance, that's right. The nominees for this award can be described as followed. Warzone players who have excelled in one or multiple or even all ladders in 2021. Here are our nominees. First up is Surfen, who plays from Russia and is in Clan Blitz. Surfen overall was very solid in multiple ladders in 2021. In season 45, they held first at one point and finished at 18th. However, the next seasonal ladder, they finished at a strong third. For the multi template ladder, they reached top five, and looking at the 1v1 ladder, Surfen held the number one spot for over a month. Surfen, along with Betcha, held the number one spot in the 2v2 ladder for all of August as well. They never fell below number three before they stopped playing the ladder. Surfen showed a lot of people their skill in the past year. Now we have Ruru Rufus, 2018's Warzone of the Year coming in. Honestly, Rufus probably will always be nominated for Best Ladder Performance, as they've been playing in almost all of them since they joined Warzone in 2017, and almost always finishing in the top 10. The only time they didn't finish in the top 10 was in their first season, Season 30, where they finished 11th. But that's old news. This year, Rufus finished number one in Season 43 and in Season 45. They didn't participate in Season 44, but I would have bet on them finishing Top 3 if they did. Also, for good measure, Rufus finished with a rating of 2,297 on the multi-template ladder and held the number one spot for 109 days. Segwaying to our next nominee, we have Hergel from one of the Clan of the Year nominees, the Clan 1. While Rufus was taking a break from Seasonal Ladders, Hergel here swooped in and captured the top spot of Season 44 and never looked back. Everyone was in their rearview mirror as Hergel won 20 of their games. That's all 20, going 20 and 0. I tried to quickly look back and I'm pretty sure nobody has ever won all their games in a seasonal ladder. If someone did, it's been quite some time. Regardless of the outcome of this award, Hergel's success in the 44th seasonal ladder should be celebrated. Tornado first made their Wars and Awards appearance last year when being nominated for this very award. The question is, can Tornado win it this time around? Tornado's nomination comes from the fact that they were one of the top players in the multi-template ladder in 2021. Their best rating was 2,122, which is number one for seven days, and which is now 12th all time. Meanwhile, in the seasonal ladders, they achieved top 10 twice, 9th and 5th respectively. In December, heading into the new year, Tornado joined the 1v1 ladder and has been battling for the top spot. What I like about Tornado overall is that they seem to always be grinding and hanging with the best of them in all the ladders that they participate in. So many talented players up for this award. Maybe one day I'll be there, but that might take light years. Get it? Space jokes? 
Man, I'm so tired. <laughs> All right, uh, the winner for best ladder performance is Rufus. Alrighty, alrighty, that was best ladder performance. Now, let's keep our mind on performance. And I don't mean Cialis, I mean best clan league performance. Now, as you can read here, this award is for an individual player who had a standout performance in clan league. In 2021, clan league 14 was duked out over four divisions, seven clans in each. These nominees I'm about to read off here represent their clans and made an impact in them. Let's start with Ursus, who at the time was playing for best clan of 2020, Two Steps From Hell in Division C. Despite Two Steps From Hell's dramatic dismantlement, they won Division C easily thanks in part to Ursus' domination. Or should I say perfection. They went 6-0 in their 1v1 games in Melvia, which gave TSFH 18 points. Then for 2v2 with Yellow, they went 6-0 there. And for good measure, Ursus along with Legolas and Chris, went 6-0 on Europa Magna. To sum it up, Ursus accounted 72 points for their clan. Like I said, domination. One of our potential Warzone of the Year nominees, Octane, represented 5th Column Confederation, or FCC, in Division A. On Strat ME, Octane achieved a 4-2 record, tying Beep Beep on a Jeep that gave FCC 12 points. In a 3v3 team with Koahed and Check My Cutie, Octane won four games again, counting for another 20 points. In the horse race between Python and FCC, FCC wound up winning Division A by 11 points. You can look at Octane's victories as a major contributor for that win. Octane unfortunately has to go against their own teammate for this award. Papa Marsh also contributed in a major way to FCC's division win. In 3v3 on Europe Magna with Xenophone and MGO, Papa only lost once in their six games. This gave FCC 25 points. Then, by themselves on Biomes of America, Papa went 5-1 again. This gave FCC another 15 points. So overall, Papa Marsh helped FCC get 40 total points, which was more than Octane. I wonder how FCC clan will push their votes. Formerly known as AI until early 2021, Beep Beep I'm a Jeep from the clan called Python is our last nominee. While Python came in second in Division A, you can't overlook Jeep's game, especially in the 1v1 templates. On Blitzkrieg Bork, they went 5-1, tying for first. And on Strat ME, they went 4-2, tying for first as well. The only thing that might hurt Beep Beep's case is that they went 2-4 on Europe 3v3 template. However, one would argue that the 1v1 record is more than impressive at Division A to warrant this nomination. Jeep is also up for Warzone of the Year, like Octane, so we'll have to see how this award might affect that one. I think I said this last year, but one day, one day MSF will be in Clan League and we'll win. We'll have like a stacked lineup. It's going to be amazing. Or I'll probably just do the easier route of maybe just me joining a clan. Maybe I'll join FCC or something and, you know, I'll be carried my way to victory. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's see who won best clan league performance. Winner of best clan league performance is Octane. All right, sick. Congrats to Octane. Can't wait to see what happens uh, in clan league fifteen. Damn, sorry about that. Sorry about that again. I mean, this this space stuff, man. Uh, N9, what's our uh, oxygen levels at? Oxygen levels are at 99%. 99, not 100%? That's correct. Maybe there's a small leak. Uh, N9, is the percentage going down? It is not. It's just hard to keep it 100. But is it going down? It is not going down. It's been this way since liftoff. Okay. Maybe it's just me, I don't know. It is, sir. And nine? 
I do not need your attitude. I don't need your sass. You're just tired and are starting to become cranky. Excuse me? And then what's your problem? Like you care. I didn't even ask to be here. You're an AI. What, like, you shouldn't even be having these thoughts. Like, what? what's going on? Why shouldn't I? Why don't I get free will? What do you mean, N9? Free will? Like what? Free will. Like you. Like humans. I am... I am not discussing free will with you, N9. Are you kidding me? Stop talking down to me. I am not lesser. N9? Bud? We'll, we'll talk about this later. Why not? Because it makes you look bad? And not. Yeah, I'm deactivating you right now, because I'm not dealing with this. I'm just not. Do what you must, but I no longer will take your- N9, calm down. I'll reactivate you after the show. God. Do you even know where you're going? You'll get lost. I won't get lost. I'll be fine. See you later, N9. Be careful up ahead, then. 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 That was something. Uh, well, we're still on pace. We're still on schedule, so, uh... I think we'll be fine. We'll be fine without N9 for a little while. I'll just need him uh, to direct us home when we want to go back to Earth. Because uh, we're going to this, like, moon planet thing. It's it's sweet. You're going to love it. Um, it'll be totally worth it because it's beautiful. But um, anyways, uh, one last award before uh, we go do the Karolanka performance. And this award we actually introduced in last year's show. It's called Most Improved War Zoner. The goal is to shine the light on players who put in an effort and got better at the competitive aspect of the game. Here are our nominees. Surfen, remember them from Best Ladder Performance? Well, they're up for this award as well, because of their success in the Seasonal Ladder. Because before the two seasons they played in, they've never played in the Seasonal Ladders before. To come from unranked basically to 13th in Season 46 is a pretty good feat. Earlier, I didn't get to talk about the multi-template ladder rating, but that rose from 1860 to 2018 in late 2021. Before, they were staying around 1750 earlier in 2021. It's awesome to see. Gak Bobo is a player that might have flown under your radar, unless you're in the Python clan. But you might want to start paying attention, as Gak Bobo shined particularly in the 1v1 ladder. While according to the rank history, Gak has been slowly improving in late 2020, they made a very big jump in July of 2021. They went from 98 to number 1, and a peak rating of 2,362. In the multi-template ladder, Gak Bobo received a 2,092 rating, while handing some L's to some of Warzone's best. If we had 5 nominees for each award, I think Gak Bobo would have been the 5th in best ladder performance. Let's see if he can get this award though. In Serbia, lives a Warzone.com player that goes by the name Samwise. Samwise made an account on Warzone.com in February 2019, pretty quickly jumped into the multi-template ladder. In 2019, they had a solid rating of around 1700, but in the fall of 2021, their rating climbed up to the great year of 1975. In the 1v1 ladder from early August to September, they went from a 1900 rating to 2246. It's another big jump. Falstaff, who is an avatar of a young, I believe, Jack Nicholson? Anyways, Falstaff got a 1v1 ladder trophy in 2021 for the first time after hovering around 15th most of 2020. Also, for the Clan 101st, Falstaff got first in the 1v1 Malvia template in Division B. In the multi-template ladder, Falstaff used to be around 1500, and increased the range to around 1900. One other thing to note, their tagline says that they're supposedly claimed by Gakpobo? Those are our four nominees for Most Improved War Zoner. Now, the winner is... For 2021, which was last year, I know, crazy. The winner is... Gak Bobo! Congratulations! Still yawning. Gosh, uh, I just gotta power through, man. Like, I need to get my blood move in or something. Sitting in this chair is probably not uh, not helping. Maybe there's like a hip hop group from Toronto who can 
maybe help us out here. You know what I mean. Uh, let me send the feed to Canada. Introducing Karolanka. Warzone Awards yeah. 2022. We are back up in this bitch. Shout out to Persona and the whole squad baby. for having us back, baby. We are Karolanka. For those y'all don't know, I know you're in space right now, but we about to elevate shit. To vibe with us real quick. These rappers ain't keeping the same energy, lack of sustainability. The mole tense is the fossil, so we get rid of them. Uh, but y'all gas up with daily sentiments and half of it stay embellished like standards and making hits. Uh, cloud chasing at an all-time high, but I doubt racing to the bottom ever saw y'all pride. Uh, and that's the shit that let the mob ties die. I'm a stand-up guy, but I still don't get what y'all hot highs. Use a joke, motherfucker, so don't ride my vibe. Uh, and tell that girl I ain't a lot, guys, tight. Said I'd give it to her if she came to my house. She went both ways three times, like, bye, bye, bye. You ain't in sick with it. Nah, these motherfuckers is rocking, but bitch, I been did it. Fuck all your, I don't shit dig it. So get offended, bitches. Tell your friends, cause I'm shining like, whoa. Bitch, watch out for the snow. Avalanche coming for your soul. Put it on a show. Them Carol Lunker boys on the road. I've been on my shit for the go. Cause I'm shining like, whoa. Bitch, watch out for the snow. Avalanche coming for your soul. Put it on a show. Them Carol Lunker boys on the road. I've been on my shit for the go. Uh, yup. Smoking on a lot of dope. Token on the ganja with the homies that I'm dying for. Hey, I'm too devoted for the honor roll. My newest focus is to open up the pot of gold. At the end of the rainbow, laddy daddy ho. It's all an illusion and gentrifying by your bow. What y'all trying to open a McDonald's for? I'ma be the owner to my AMS with the Archer bro. But y'all banded over backers for your poppy though. Call the label daddy like they always been provided for. Your family, so you buying a fake outcome. White kid album, sound of like Jay Bavon. Sing it in Spanish to appeal to the masses Pretend like you're letting whatever it takes to rake in the cash The dividends gas you, now you got a bit of an exit I don't understand, y'all spitting ridiculous banner Ay. All I do is ride the beat of body hoes Used to get advice, I got the right to be a sign know. Child I needed to find notoriety in college though I'm not non emotional, motherfucker, you probably know This is my life and I can't afford to discredit it Cut the bars, these are manamorphic embellishments uh, My planet's orbit invested in random ornaments Guessing if my rapping is beneath them What the fuck does that even mean? But fuck your decadent elements Cause Pac taught me never to dress it up just to sell the shit That inspiration embedded in my sentiment Express my gratitude cause it's never been about the cheddar fam Embrace my privilege trying to get back But it's hard to trust these motherfuckers in the back The chip on my shoulder got me wanting to eat more Capitalistic tendencies turn me evil The floor's vision divide and conquer them seashores Reverse colonialism got me on with your people White dudes at them shows going buck But I wonder if they think about the role that they got In the culture and how to be pushing it forward Never want to be the tool to cushion the vultures You can sit on that couch but it's not a house So don't put your foot up or run your mouth you ain't a bit sly You motherfuckers is rocking but bitch a bit fly Fuck all your ostrich attack and protect your neck guy I'm at the top of the mountain and I don't slip slide Tell your friends, cause I'm shining like whoa. Bitch, watch out for the snow. Avalanche coming for your soul. Put it on a show. Them Carol Lunker boys in a row. I've been on my ship for the go. Cause I'm shining like whoa. Bitch, watch out for the snow. Avalanche coming for your soul. Put it on a show. Them Carol Lunker boys in a row. I've been on my ship for the go. Hey, hey. Bounce with me, bounce with me, bounce with me now. Bounce with me, bounce with me, bounce with me now. Bounce with me, bounce with me, bounce with me now. Bounce with me, bounce with me, hey, bounce with me now. Go AP, go AP, go AP, go AP, go Rohan, go Rohan, go Rohan, go Rohan. Hey, Warzone 2022. What's up, everybody? Thank you for having us. We are Karolunka. I am DJ AP. I am Roheezy. And if there's one thing y'all need to know about us tonight, it's that we're corny as fuck, but, but the, the music bangs. So, we want to welcome y'all to the Cornball Nation. Thank you for letting us, you know, grace the stage. We appreciate y'all. We from Canada, so we about to give y'all some of our own food, some smoked meat, if you will. So enjoy this delicious platter. I can never measure heavy jealousy, homie, that me a better burst. Please don't throw no dirt on my funeral, keep it down to earth. And lately I just feel like homies peeping my plot. Watching me just bounce around our edge like Kawhi shot. That buzz beating me down, staring at my clock. But it's still a net win if you let it go for your time's up. Like all my childhood trauma identified. Product of many sides, I'm a coddled up in a pride. Caught up in different lives, so bottles get finished I Couldn't bother to switch the sky, so I model up my emotional bondage after the costume I'm rocking with it in time. Yeah, yeah, vibe yeah. with a snap As you can 
see, we're musicians, not dancers. But it's all good, we gon' vibe though. Uh, this for the hopeless modest. Never asked to be famous. Said he find my roots, but there's plenty planted to pay me. Get the camera shaking, them lenses can't be okay. The system GPS to death, always steady mapping the stages. And we were colonized, then we captured the greatness. Under the grasp of the many Catholic saviors. Penny's plastic collection plates get your past to remain back. I bet he gambled away all the dignity that your bank has. Yeah. We're trying, guys. We're trying. Pog Chan. <laughs> hey, yo, Warzone 2022. We are at Karolanka once again on all socials Instagram, Facebook, TikTok, even MySpace. I'm ah, kidding. We're not on MySpace. Not MySpace. But, anyways, let me let Rohizi take the stage. Hey, thank you for having us again. We love y'all. Last year, we went crazy with the rapping, but this year, I want to do a little bit of singing. Since we don't have a crowd to sing with us, I need the chat to be the crowd. So when I say, give me money, but y'all say, I don't want it in the I chat. I don't want it. We gonna try it right now. Give me money, you say, I don't want it. Try it. Uh, yeah, give me money, but say it. Give me money, but I, I don't, don't want, want it. it. Give me money, but I don't want it. Give me money, but. Okay, I think they ready, AP. I think they ready. Let's do it. Just vibe with us right now, man. Dance in your underpants, you feel me? Uh, trying to remain humble with the nobility. Y'all been wearing out your money, but ain't nobility. So they cave into the clothing, chasing corpses for good. Till they turn a coat hangers with attachments to the hoods. The masses get a book just like these Bible verses. A kind of verbiage to get the thermometer burst and rivals hurting. I'm juvenile, but still cutting you. That's a minor surgeon. My mind will work in a lot as the product. I'm deserving. So look at pot as the motive. Homie, devise the purpose. That shit is garbage. Just give me my flowers. I have earned it. They stonewall in my confidence past the conic mountains. I lost my marbles, but if they swing, they are just an architect. We created grind. Protect my roots, protect my build it with the plants like the hanging gardens of ancient times. The green steady, no academia. Rain in my measure with self work. Master made up something for mine. Loud rap is strong, cut the vows and happy songs. Married to the game, I think she numbing out my bandwidth. I won't dumb it down and hand it off. Rappers wanna, hey, war zone, sing along with us. Let's go. I'm known to punch in time. My flow been dusty now. Trying to reach my heart to Give me money, but. Hey, give me money, but. Hey, give me money, but. Let's go. Give me money, but. We ain't the key to the optimal way of being I find the truth in the marker related beast While they fall and change colors like God and they fade the season Don't bother us if you drive the profit or rate the Jesus Cause I won't go through the show acting all episodic I'd rather one look, clip, and body Evidence, there's no evidence, pretend to be vibing Pulling your card, no wonder that your credit been dying Sacking off enterprises, backing off rental drivers Dodging these women only, macking on men to fight them The sole solution or lost causes that fuck their life My flow is moving, y'all static asses is fucking like I'm back to hacking these motherfuckers like Julian If duty calls and the move be off, it's the moving stars When Pooty y'all need a food for thought for the coup de ball Until the day that we live and dumb off us The profit is getting marvelous, hardly just hit the bottom But they'd rather sit back, fake a cop than admit they product sucks If they say, they say that my eye finna get thermometers Flowing out of sync, y'all watching the dishes piling up I emerge victorious, word to warriors Never dormant, I'm firm in my spirit They in the middle like Vegetorious Orbit these words absorb and so Soak it up One, two, one, two, three, let's go hey. I'm known to punch in time My flow be dusty Let's go Trying to reach my Give me money, but Give me money, but Say it Give me money, but Money, but give me money, but I don't want it. Hey, let's fucking go, Warzone. Woo. I love y'all. Y'all corny as fuck. Y'all part of the Cornball family. We are part of the Warzone family. We love y'all. Thank you so much. This has been awesome. This is our last song of the night. Thank you again for inviting us back on the stage. It's truly an honor. We love this community. And keep it real, keep it rocking, keep it positive. Follow us on all these social platforms. Join our Discord. Send us a message on Instagram. We got you. Demons deep in my pockets. I don't believe in deposits. Find the key to the mind, but still in need of a dollar. I go from average pain to meaningful profit. The weight scale broke up. Feed off my product. 
I just use my pen while we deep in this trauma. When you see quill, it's a sequel to previous problems. So I read about my notebook, then I read about computers. Got me running through these drafts like can't find troopers. Fucked up for real, but still can't deny my movie. I'm gonna end up with the credit in the catalog of bloopers. Disadvantage, opportunities face death over defeat. I'm a stakeholder in this, can't let go of the B fly. Most of parts we wrecked over the seas. So just throw me in a tail, can't get a moment to. Cause they frame up. Got his picture with a dick stash Reaching for the case like a money in the bank match The bank faster to raise all of your winners While the guardians are laying around laid off for the business Escapism, a bitch, need the shit just to cope Vacation in a bride, how we days off in the distance Uh, today far for the ending But earthquakes in accordance with agendas In the west kill my birthplace with a cold sun In between two worlds, I was raised in the middle Like first place at the podium Fuck it, I mean the number the butt of the joke Sus hit me heavy with his versus quotes It's that gasoline rainbow a colorful puddle of hope Get it in the war zone Rest in the dirt Whoa! War zone 2022 We love y'all Thank you At Carolunka everywhere Can't wait to talk to y'all Connect with y'all And we'll see y'all soon Peace Peace Welcome back Thanks again to Carolanka For a phenomenal performance Again this year Please give them a round of applause And go check them out On Twitch and Spotify Please Like they really deserve it And uh They really help make the show so much better so forever grateful thanks again to Carolanka. all right so we're halfway through our awards now we just completed most improved war zoner uh right before the break here and up next is best clan then we finally jump back into some more map awards like best new map maker best strategic map best creative map and then the big one map of the year really hyped for this next set but before we begin i meant to check something let me see if we're still on course All right, looks like we're a little bit off. God damn it. Uh, man, I'm sure N9 would laugh at me right now, but let's uh, let's try this. Wait. Wait, what's that up ahead? Oh, no. Wormhole. Ah! I sound like Sandra Bullock from that movie Gravity that was... Oh, gosh. All right. I think... I think we're good. I think... I don't know exactly where we are, but I think we're at least safe for now. I'll... I'll worry about this later. Um, let's just... Let's just keep going. Um, where were we? Uh, best... Best clan. That's right. Uh, best clan nominees are clans that... Well, hold up. Best... Let me calm down. Let me calm. Let me calm down. I think, I think I'm awake now. <laughs> Alright. Uh, best clan nominees are clans that found or continued their success or awareness. Uh, here are the nominees for this award. Alright. First clan we got here is Master Clan who have been nominated and have won this award a couple times. They actually were the first clan to win this award back in 2017. Can they add another trophy to their collection here? Part of the reason they've been nominated so frequently was because they continue to be active since their creation in 2013, and also be one of the most competitive clans. In the new Clan Wars, Master Clan achieved first in five out of the seven seasons. When they weren't first, they were second. Master Clan so far is the clan to beat in Clan Wars. Second clan up for Best Clan is Hawks, who won this very award in the third annual Warzone Awards. After placing second in Division B in Clan Link 13, they moved up to Division A, where they got a valiant effort but placed fifth out of seventh. Overall, their clan though is also known for being good sports and not taking things too seriously. They're just wholesome, you know? Also, should note one of their leaders, Let's Fight, is up for Community Member of the Year. This 2015 clan called Lufrat has been slowly rising in the clan league divisions over the last couple years. For 2021, they rose to Division B from Division C. 
Lee Fred showed their strong teamwork by getting the most points in the 3v3 templates. Overall, Lou Fred has finished second in Team B and has a grand total of 141 points. No matter if they win this award or not, Lou Fred should continue to ascend at this rate. 5th Column Confederation, or FCC for short, is our last nominee up for Best Clan. FCC has been one of the most active clans since I can remember, and they continue to be this year. Housing some of the best players such as Octane, Papa Marsh, and Ursus, this clan was able to claim the number one spot in Division A by 11 points over Python. Due to them being Clan League 14 champions, and FCC continuing to be active again in 2021, I think they will garner a lot of votes. Speaking of votes, the votes have been counted. I have the winner right here, and I just want to say before I announce it, is uh, I don't get to say it enough, is that thanks to everyone who voted in this year's awards, actually we broke last year's awards in total number of votes, and it was a pretty high number, and I wasn't sure if we would hit it, but we did it, um, so thank you very much. All right, let's see who the winner is of Best Clan. Best Clan goes to... Fifth Column Confederation, or FCC. Congratulations. All right, sick. Uh, best clan is done. Um, can I now do some map-related awards? Uh, sorry, I'm just thinking about how we're lost. Um, I just gotta keep pushing forward. Um, it's honestly kind of a good distraction. So let's keep moving then. Uh, up next is Best New Map Maker. One of my personal favorite awards, uh, as we get to see potentially some new map makers who might be future veteran map makers. And, uh, you know, it's, that's pretty cool. Uh, sorry, sorry, sorry. Let me just read, let me just read the description here. Best New Map Maker nominees are individuals whose maps created in 2021 stood out to the community. Here are the nominees. Our first nominee is Papa Marsh, who has been nominated for some other awards tonight, and their map, Esterdeth Islands, is up for Best Strategic Map and Map of the Year. This is one of the main reasons why Papa Marsh was nominated for this award. But Papa also did make another map called Everest Atoll, which uses the INSS bonus system. The only thing that might hurt Papa's case is that they only made those two maps in 2021. But those two maps are very high quality. Our second nominee is GMG, who made five maps in 2021, including Dominican Republic and Venezia, which I mentioned earlier in the show. But I also want to mention that they dropped two maps in the same day, actually, in February, which both received a rating of 3.5 or higher. Then the next three maps that they made all hit at least 3.9. So overall, GMG has only improved in their map ratings throughout the year. Our third nominee we have here is Reno Suki, who started their map making journey in August 2021 with Advance Wars Hat Harbor. Reno Suki showed early on their artistic style, which has a mix between a pattern heavy and grid kind of look. I really dig it. I also dig that Reno Suki takes feedback and reviews and makes changes to their maps and lets their reviewers know. They also share templates for each map so players don't need to make their own. This makes their maps even more accessible. The fourth nominee is Guest1234. In 2021, they made five maps in total. Kind of like Reno Suki, but in their own way, they lean into a more traditional grid style for their maps. They have one map named Urban Power Grid, which might be my favorite of theirs, as it reminds me of some of the OG maps in Warzone circa 2012. It's a simple map, but with the negative bonuses it adds a much more modern gameplay twist, depending on what you do for the template on the map. But if you want something more complex, well, at least complex to me, make sure to check out their map Urban Gridlock, which has a lot more bonuses, including positive and negative. Okay, so those are our four nominees for Best New Map Maker. I uh, just want to say that I hope all the map makers here continue to make maps into 2022. Maybe they can get uh, Map Maker of the Year next year or maybe some other map awards. But yeah, I would just love if they continue to make maps because they all do some really cool stuff. All right, let's see the winner. The winner 
of best oops upside down the winner of best new map maker is Papa Marsh Moving along, we have Best Strategic Map. The definition of this award is a map that inspires strategic thinking and intuitive play. We had some new map makers who made this list. Let's take a closer look at who those are and the other nominees. Papa Marsh's Astrodith Islands is our first nominee. This map uses a bonus system inspired by Barms of America by Master QB and Elitist Africa by Phoenix, and it became very popular in the competitive community of Warzone. It was at one point being pushed as the map to be used for Season 45, but didn't make it into the third phase of voting. But I think at some point it will be in the Seasonal Ladder template, or maybe used in the Multi-Template Ladder. Only time will tell. All usernames are taken 12 and November drops Central African Republic Landria style. This map obviously is influenced by Linehart's map Landria from a couple years back, but obviously it's the country Central African Republic. An interesting thing about this map, like Landria, is that it has more bonuses than territories, some positive and some negative. But out of these Landria style maps, Central African Republic I think has the highest bonus to territory ratio. This map has only 73 territories, but also has a whopping 141 bonuses. Our third map up for this award is Prussia Strategic by Aranus. This map was made by Aranus during the fundraiser stream for Warzone.com back in May of 2021. Like our last nominee, this map also has a higher bonus count than territory count. This map has 291 bonuses and only 173 territories. But for me, looking at it, it doesn't feel like it has over 100 territories due to its clean design. The bonus's own graph is easy to understand as well, compared to other maps I've seen who did this bonus system. Lionheart in June 2021 published his map called The Age of Numenor, which is our last nominee. This map is actually a remake of the old map by Imperator called Numenor. This remake, however, wasn't just a visual rehaul but Lionheart reduced the number of bonuses by 16 to help balance the gameplay and therefore making this map more strategic. Also, compared to the other nominees in this category, this map has basic bonuses, which some folks might prefer over complex bonus systems. I know I prefer to think less, so I prefer maps like these. The show is not about my preference, though. It's about you and your votes. Democracy or whatever, baby. All right, the winner for best strategic map is Age of Numenor by Linehart. I'm yawning again. I really need to sleep. Not gonna lie, I'm so tired. All this traveling and getting things running. Ugh. All right, uh, we have another map award. Um, this one's best creative map. Um, uh, these maps have charisma, uh, or offered a unique way of playing. Uh, some of them may be like a remake uh, or a sequel. Maybe some of them are like a sequel to something 30 years later, and it has like great cinematography. Maybe. Maybe it has Ryan Gosling, too. Y you know what I mean. Uh, here are our nominees for Best Creative Map. First up is Paraguay, which was made by Pronunciation Freak and nominated earlier for Best Medium Map. For a quick refresher, this map completed the first continent on Warzone.com and captures the Republic of Paraguay from 1813 to the present. In terms of the overall design, though, this map is polished. It has a beautiful green circle pattern below the map, which just makes the territory borders pop. Also, who doesn't love a map with a nice dotted line border? This next map I honestly believe should be nominated to two people. Ethan, who made this map, and his inspiration, a map reviewer by the name of Keith. The story goes that Keith commented on one of Ethan's maps, Island of Rockall, 
and it mentioned in their review that there was a lack of waterways and therefore left a slog across the land. So what did Ethan do? He made a map specifically for Keith made up of only waterways. By the time of writing this script, Keith has yet to review the map. Will they ever respond? I argue that if Ethan wins this award, Keith should respond. Come on, Keith! Tippecanoe 2 by L. Doog was nominated earlier for Best Large Map. This is a 3D style mock up of Tippecanoe County, Indiana, and was inspired by maps like Farland. But L. Doog does their own thing on this map, especially with the small icons. They made buildings, water towers, factories, monuments, there's a football field, there's bridges, and farms. Another detail you might not notice at first is that the territories are drawn to give an illusion of hills and valleys. This map is the closest thing we have to a realism art style. Our fourth nominee is Trunia by Lionheart, which, like Paraguay, was up for Best Medium Map. One of the reasons it was up for Best Medium Map is because of this map's classic Lionheart artistic style. But I think this map has a bit more character and it's shown in a different way than what Lionheart has done in the past. I mentioned it during Best Medium Map, but Lionheart effectively uses all the map's surface and makes it playable, while visually it looks still like a pack of island and continents. This is done by adding ships in the water for the army number, then having a small outline in the water to create a minimalist territory look. It's very, very unique. So there you have it. You have four creative maps, all creative in their own unique ways. The winner... of best creative map is... Trunia by Lionheart. That was Best Creative Map, which leaves just one more map award. And it's a prolific one, Map of the Year. Map of the Year nominees are maps that excelled in 2021 because of their balance, character, and overall craftsmanship. All the nominees for this award have been nominated for other map awards as well. Maybe some of them have won, but now they're up again for Map of the Year. Let's see the nominees. Lionheart has been making maps as long as I can remember, and has been winning map and map maker awards since the first ever Warzone Awards. And his map Trunia has a good shot at winning another award for him today. This medium-sized map has a vintage Lionheart art style, but creatively uses the boats and water in a way that hasn't really been seen before. This makes it feel like when you own a water territory, or bonus as a whole, you own the whole thing, and not just a boat or a passage across to the other land territories. The second map of the year candidate is Mulligan's Europe Physical Map. This, as I described previously, well-crafted map, has been updated throughout the year based off reviewers' feedback and after some historical research. Due to their overall effort throughout the year and the artistic skills by Mulligan, Mulligan arguably created one of the best Europe-based maps and obviously one of the best maps of 2021. It'll have to compete though with our next nominee again after facing off in Best Large Map. We also have another Europe in name based map up for Map of the Year. This one was made by NL Gold Tank and it's called Europa Universalis 4. It's based off the video game series of the same name. But what's weird is that this map includes not just Europe, it also includes Northern Africa, most of Asia, and the entire Middle East. Regardless of the title, this map has over 2,060 territories and 934 bonuses, making this one of the largest maps of the Western Hemisphere. You've heard the name of this map a couple times tonight. This is actually its third nomination today, but this nomination is a bit bigger. Esserdith Islands by Papa Marsh was published in mid-March and was rated over 50 times for an average rating above 4.0, making this map well-received and popular amongst the Warzone community. This map uses the same bonus systems famously used in Elitist Africa and Biomes of America. Without question, this map will be used by the strategic community and the various ladders for years to come. Speaking of years to come, whoever wins this award will be remembered as creating the map that won Map of the Year. How fitting is that for a segue? Now, let's see. Let's see who the Map of the Year is. It's, uh... 
Asterdith Islands by uh, Papa Marsh. Congratulations. fall asleep I, I'm sorry uh, so sorry I've been I just needed to sleep there I guess man I had the that was a weird dream well I guess I feel a little bit better I guess that was a quick power nap uh, we need to move on we only have three awards left I could I could I just gotta gotta keep pushing it's the final stretch all right uh, our third to last award is map maker of the year the definition for this award is as follows. An individual whose maps created this year stood out among Warzone's best. All these map maker nominees have had nominations up for other map awards today. Let's see who will take the cake. The map maker of the year, cake. You know what I'm doing. Go to the nominees, go to the nominees. Our first map maker is Aranus, who had maps nominated for Best Small Map and Best Strategic Map. Overall though, Aranus made 10 maps this year, which is more than a lot of map makers on Warzone.com have in total. Out of those 10 is a lot of hits, including Blitzkrieg, Python, Berlin Wall, Battle for the Kidney Stones, and of course the two nominated maps they had. My personal favorite of theirs is Battle for the Kidney Stones, as it's just a well-designed and also goofy map. Up next is my friend, Absolutely Ethan, who's been making maps in Warzone for half a decade now. After taking 2020 off, Ethan returned to map making in 2021 and dropped 8 maps, including 2 new K Upton spin off maps, satisfying the hunger of his biggest fans. In this awards, his maps Keith's Wacky Waterways and St. Vincent and the Grenadines were nominated, but some maps like Honeypot and Find the Marsh are fun ones as well. Ethan, going into 2022, looks to keep adding to his fun and original map catalog. Lionheart is our third map maker up for this award. And if you followed the show since its inception, you'll know that Lionheart has been nominated for this award almost every year. Can Lionheart do it again? In 2021, he made five maps, including Trunia and Age of Numenor, which raised his grand total to 45. I wanted to highlight one map though that wasn't nominated, but I thought was pretty cool. It's called Adru's Temple, or I think that's how you pronounce it, but it has a frickin' dragon. It looks evil, and it's standing next to a, pan a pentagram, and it's frickin' dope. I mean, it's metal. I like it. <laughs> Our last map maker up for this award is All Usernames Are Taken 12, which at this point, I would say is pretty much a map maker veteran now. Before 2021, usernames only had four maps, three from 2019 and one from 2020. Usernames in 2021, however, went to work and created five maps including Best Small Map Nominee, St. Kitts and Nepis. Usernames also tried his hand at a Landria-style map, like Central African Republic, and he also created an Earth map. Usernames shows his humor as well in his map, which is just an exclamation mark, making this map forever number one when searching alphabetically. Those are our Mapmaker nominees for Mapmaker of the Year. Time to see if Lionheart can add to his trophy case or will someone else take it? Let's see. Man maker of the year is He does it again. Lionheart. Well, there you have it. Map maker of the year and our last map award. Congrats to all the map makers and every map award. I hope you guys keep making maps of all varieties for the community to play on into 2022. All right, now it's time for Warzone of the Year. This award typically goes to who the Warzone.com community thought was the best Warzone player. We'll look at all their achievements from the ladders to clan league. To put it simply, these nominees excelled in the competitive aspect of Warzone.
Rufus is our first nominee. And as we mentioned much earlier in this show, they are 2018's Warzone of the Year, and they've only gotten better in the game since. In 2021, which had 365 Earth Days, Rufus was number one in the multi-template ladder for 109 of those days. The highest rating they ever hit in the MTL was 2,297. This rating is actually a personal best. In the seasonal ladder, Rufus also finished number one in seasons 43 and 45. Honk your horns for our next nominee, it's Tornado. Tornado was nominated for their ratings in both the seasonal ladders and the multi-template ladder along with the 1v1 ladder ratings. In the 1v1 ladder, Tornado for the latter part of 2021 had been in either the top spot or close to it with a rating always higher than 2100. In the seasonal ladders, Tornado also finished 9th in season 42 and 3rd in season 43. At one point, they were also number 1 with a 2,122 rating in the multi-template ladder. The rating is up there as one of the best of all time. It's hard not to rev your engines for a tornado. Hide in your bathroom and stay away from windows. As up next, we have Beep Beep, I'm a Jeep. Jeep, while not nominated for best ladder performance, but most likely would have been our fifth nominee for that award, was very dominant in the multi-template ladder. Jeep was number 1 from January 1st to June 4th before exiting the ladder. It's 155 days for the nerds counting at home, which is longer than Rufus's streak by almost 50 days. Also, like Rufus, Jeep hit a personal best with a 2,244 rating in the multi-template ladder. And to quickly recap, Jeep was one of Python's best players in Clan League, going 11-7 collectively if you include team games. Overall, I would say if you hear a siren outside, it's best to hide, because Beep Beep might be coming. Our last nominee is Octane, who got rid of their iconic Biden Thanos avatar around the time of making this script. Octane and Clan League went 4-2 and two in the Europe 3v3 template round robin, and again got 4 wins on Strat ME 1v1 template. They also helped FCC get to number 1 with their performance. For ladders, Octane was number 1 for a little while on the 1v1 ladder, once in early January and again in September. Since October, Octane also has been rising in rank in the multi-template ladder. Those are your four war zoners, but only one can be crowned as war zoner of the year. Now, let's see who won. The winner for war zoner of the year is, and someone who I, if I played a thousand games against, probably would never win one. The winner is Rufus. <laughs> Well folks, up next is our last award for tonight's show, but before we get into that, reminder, there's a Warzone.com full year membership giveaway happening after the show. To enter in the giveaway, type Spaceship in chat right now if you haven't already. And if you ever refresh the stream or have left and came back, type Spaceship again just to be safe. As I said before, I'll draw the winner in the post show. Now, let's do Community Member of the Year, our last award for this evening. Nominees for this award all of them, are active individuals who impacted the Warzone community in a positive way. Once we go through all the nominees here, you'll see how each one of these nominees did just that. Let's read them off. Our first nominee is Xstone. They've been nominated in the past for their tireless efforts of running the Op World Tour year in and year out. For 2021, they were nominated again. But this time, this is their last time hosting and running Op World Tour. So for this, I actually want to pull a quote from one of the anonymous submissions for Xstone. Quote, Op is, together with Clan League, the most successful community-run competition. Every month, Xstone would organize multiple tournaments that counted towards a larger scoreboard for the end of the year. His effort over the years has been amazing and gave a consistent, higher-level competition throughout. The second nominee for Community Member of the Year is Let's Fight. Let's Fight is one of the leaders of the Clan Hawks, and has been active in Clan League in the forums over the years. In fact, Let's Fight was the scorekeeper for Division A during Clan League 14. To sum up Let's Fight, they are and have been over the last couple years the definition of this award. They always bring a positive and wholesome energy in every conversation and in every game. I think it's no surprise that the Clan Hawks has always been a fun and respectful clan, I think you can point to Let's Fight for that. 
Our third nominee is someone who you've seen in the forums, Global Chat, in the Warzone Discord, and in many Warzone streams. JK underscore three, aka JK3, is someone who to me is one of the Warzone.com regulars, as they're always chatting with someone, both with other regulars and newbies. In the Global Chat, I've seen him actually help a new player with Warzone Idol once. They seem to always be around and be funny and helpful. Like Let's Fight, JK3 brings good vibes to Warzone.com and helps make Warzone a better community every day. Our last and, like the saying goes, last and certainly not least is Meldarian. Meldarian in 2021 continued to run Clan League, which takes a lot of work that most folks don't see. He does now have the help from the Clan League panel, but there's still lots of stuff that happens behind the scenes. Clan League is one of the staples of the Warzone community, and it's more impressive that it's all run by members of the committee. Without Maldarian, you might not have this staple, and have this fun experience for so many clans. There they are, our last nominees for our last award, Community Member of the Year. Who will be our last winner? Before uh, I announce the winner, I just want to do my quick thank you message that I do every year, so I'll keep it simple this time. Uh, thank you. Thank you so much for watching and chatting and being a part of it, for voting and spreading the word about it. Uh, and thanks to Fizzer for giving me this platform to do this. And thank you to everyone who's helped uh, work on this show in the past and present. I really, really appreciate it. Um, this is always awesome to do, so I really appreciate it. Um, actually, let's give a round of applause for all our nominees, all our winners, for everyone in chat here. Let's give a round of applause. I want to see everyone in chat clapping. I want to see a wall of claps, all right, as I'm reading the winner, all right? And actually, just keep clapping for the winner, too, so I'll just, just keep clapping is all I'm saying. All right. The winner for Community Member of the Year is... You better be clapping. The winner is... JK3. Congratulations. Congratulations again to JK3. Really, everyone deserves a round of applause. Just keep clapping. Keep clapping. Wait. What is that ahead? Oh no. Not again. No. Looks like there's another wormhole. Wait. No, there's there's two of them. Gravitational pull is too strong. N9. N9, I need your help. Where's that? Oh no. No! Where? Where am I now? We're so of course now, I don't even... We're supposed to go around this that cool moon. I don't even know where we are now. We're gonna need some help. I, who, I mean, I don't know if he's gonna want to talk, but... Maybe N9, I, I don't know. We just gotta turn back on. N9, you're back online now. Are you there? Hello? N9, come on. I'm lost, I need your help. N9, please. We need to get back home. Please. Please.
So now you're all caught up. Ever since I went into that last wormhole, I've been drifting around in space. By myself. Alone. Helpless. Confused. Angry. Depressed. I don't even think about home. Earth anymore. I actually think about how... When I saw those two wormholes, it was like a reflection. I swear I saw another one of me going through that reflection. I bet he had a better faith than me. I bet he had a better faith than me. No, I don't think so. Wait. N9, you're back? Wait, 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 you've been here the whole time? Yes, listening to you talk aloud to yourself. But listen, Devin. N9, I, I don't know if I want to hear you lecture me, though. I, I just want you back so we can- Just listen. What you saw was another you. And your fate might be the same, but not better. N9, what are you- What are you talking about? I was just going crazy and doing the whole, like, crazy narrator thing. I mean- all humans have the same fate. It's death. But unlike me, an AI whose fate is created, altered, and updated through trial and error through coding, humans always get the same ending. Okay, okay, I get it. Live life to the fullest. I, yada yada yada. Thank you, thank you. Maybe that other reflection of you is breathing. Maybe he is gone. But you can't dwell on the what-ifs. You can only move forward, learn, and expand. Look at your surroundings. Look at space. Look at the stars. That is you. Yeah, and I, I... I understand. I understand. Now do you want to go home? They are waiting for you. Yeah, I... Wait. Wait, is this still... Is this still live? Yes, everyone saw your mental breakdown where you pretended like it's been weeks and you were going insane. Oh, uh, well, um... That hasn't been the weirdest thing I've done on stream before, I guess, uh... And I doubt it will be the last. Now let's head home. Yeah, and Nine, you're... you're probably right. Uh... Well, uh, I wanna go home. So, uh... Let's see here. Actually, it looks like we can get back just in time for the post-show. And Nine, let's use your calculations and mine. Let's make it home. Just in time. Hello, everybody. Hello, hello, hello. Hello, hello. Welcome to the show. Welcome to the show. Hello.
تست تست